It's a city where anything can happen. So what could go wrong or right as I hit up LA Unscripted? Local finds and must do's. Hi everyone, I'm Dana Devon and this is what LA Unscripted is all about. Consider us your tour guide to the best things to do and see around town. Today, we're in Old Town Pasadena at Vogue Chaos, an Aveda concept and lifestyle salon because who doesn't need a little primp and pampering right about now? And because all of you are our VIPs, when you book at Vogue Chaos and tell them we sent you, all unscripters will get 20% off the service of their choice. Sweet! See why you need to hang with us every night? Oh, and here's something else fab to try. Hi, I'm Tina Kumerly, and I'm president of Highland Springs Ranch and Inn, and I'm revealing where you can stop and smell the lavender in Riverside County. We planted the lavender fields in 2002, and now we've got two major fields, and it's about 20 acres. One of the favorite things to do is stroll through the lavender fields, and as you brush against the lavender, the scent wafts in the air. We're in Cherry Valley, California. This is a 2,400 acre historic property. It's uh, Riverside County's first historic landmark. It was originally a stagecoach stop. Then it became a health resort that was way ahead of its time. In the 20s, they were doing things like colonics and juice fasting, vegetarian diets, and people who couldn't get healthy would come here, and, so the, and they would get healthy, so they called it the last resort. And it's actually a place that Albert Einstein used to come and frequent. Here is Albert Einstein at the ranch in the 1930s. Um, he was friends with the family who owned the ranch. It was uh, like a conference center for a while. It's always had these old olive trees. So when it was the stagecoach shop, it was an olive ranch mainly. So we do press our own olive oil. Um, and we planted lavender because it was one of the things that grew really well and we could live in harmony with the wildlife. It, doesn't require a lot of water and we're in a very dry hot climate. When you have, at our altitude about 2,800 feet above sea level, we get really hot days but we get cool nights. When you come to the Lavender Festival, it's more than just the fields. You can eat foods with lavender, you can make crafts with lavender, you can hear about how essential oils are made at our distillation demonstrations. There's a petting zoo. The Lavender Festival started in 2005 and the first festival was um, three days and it had about 800 guests. We're now in year 17 and it starts um, in the middle of May and goes all the way to August. After the Lavender Festival, another event that we hold is our Lavender Market Nights and that starts on September 3rd and goes through October 24th. And during that event, the fields will be lit up, we'll have live music and we'll have our sourdough pizza and a lot of the lavender inspired foods you can experience here now. It's really a place you can look at the stars and smell the lavender and, and just relax and enjoy. Experiencing the Lavender Festival or just coming to the Lavender Fields is great for a date night, a family outing, only an hour and a half from LA, but it's such a unique experience that it's definitely worth that drive. No wonder Randy Newman wrote, I love LA, and now yet another reason to sing its praise. Hi Jasmine, welcome to the Festival of Arts. Thank you for having LA Unscripted here. This is a big deal. For people who have never experienced this before, kind of walk us through the history because the Festival of Arts really kind of was the, the precursor to the pageant of the Masters. It was in 1935 that really the pageant became the sit down type of show that it is today. Because it is a performance, it's a show, and boy is it a show this year. <laughs> The Pageant of the Masters is a show made up of a series of tableau vivant, also called living pictures. And we have volunteers, wonderful people who come from our community. They pose in these living pictures, which are recreations of famous works of art. And we present as many as 40 different tableau every night. So this year, we have a theme, it's made in America and all the artwork is made in America, of course, by mostly American artists. Dee, let 
let me come backstage and I'm gonna give you guys a little sneak peek of some of the set pieces. So exciting, let's go. I like to call the pageant uh, entertaining art history lesson. <laughs> we also have music on certain nights and art activities all throughout the summer long. And what you're seeing around here is 120 fine artists work being showcased. We have oil painting, we have watercolorists, we also have ceramics and photography. You name it, we have it here at the Pageant of the Masters. <laughs> And then I've heard you've got some junior artists as well. My name is Michaela and I have finished fifth grade going into sixth grade. It's a pretty good feeling. I never expected I, my art would get this far because I always just used to draw and hang it up on my wall. I found out about the Festival of Arts um, when I was 15. My teacher entered my work into the junior arts program. When I came here and saw my work on the wall, I was just blown away by all the amazing art. And I came here every year after that. I love this place. It's a fabulous place. If you're a Laguna Beach artist, um, it's really nice because the whole city really supports our arts industry here. I think I've found a new profession. Okay, any ideas where we should go off script? Send us suggestions because you never know where we could pop up next. LA Unscripted from Beau Chaos Salon in Pasadena will be right back. How do you like my hair? They just did it for the show. Nice, right? You know that feeling you get when you know it's gonna be a good hair day? That's us. Welcome back to LA Unscripted. I'm Dana Devon, and our LAU team works hard around the clock to check out all of the local hotspots and find hidden gyms. Top job. Here in Pasadena, Bo Chaos Salon has been helping SoCal be beautiful for years, plus is part of KTLA's glam squad for our red carpet shows. And now another unscripted favorite. Scripters, we just found the coolest spot here on Abbott Kinney in Venice. It's the pink house. It's the house of Novogratz. What's it all about? Let's go take a look. So the house of Novogratz is our first store. It's here on Abbott Kinney. Uh, the Novogratz are a couple, Bob and Courtney Novogratz, that um, were designing houses. They design experiences and they design a lot of furniture. So we wanted to bring it all together here. It was important for us to have a place where people could come together and touch and feel our products, but also a place for people to just finally get out and mingle and have creativity and inspiration. And we wanted a space that really could provide that. We really want to sort of um, continue to build kind of a community that we have that uses our products for design and for lifestyle, but um, encourage them to do it in sort of new and different ways. The more we just talked further along with John, we felt like he could really kind of help oversee our whole umbrella of business opportunities. Let's talk about how happy I get when I look at this wall. Like, what is this? Is this painted on? This is called temp paper. It's actually wallpaper that you can put up and you can remove and it doesn't damage the walls. So we put this up in about an hour and you don't have to use glue or paste or anything, you just put it up and if you don't like it, you take it down. For us, it's really a good idea for people to feel like they can take creative risk when they come, when they think of their home and maybe they're in a rental or maybe they're, they're on a budget like all of us. And so to do a temporary wallpaper just felt like part of who we are. Now you did a special collaboration with Sarah Jessica Parker. Sarah Jessica has this uh, shoe line and shoe store in New York. And it's all about color, these really bright, sort of lovely, fun colors for her shoes. And our brand was very much about color. So what we did was we actually created some pieces for her that were inspired by uh, her shoe line. I love taking pictures. I've come to Venice a lot because everything 
just looks really cool. Even your wall outside, this is a great place yeah. for influencers. We did this mural the, uh, the day we moved in, actually. This is so cute. I think this is going home with me. Anything rainbow just makes me happy. Remember, we try everything first so you don't have to. Virtual reality has been around for a while now, but it's still a relatively new form of entertainment. The equipment is still expensive, and that's why virtual reality playgrounds are popping up at malls across America. Recently, I checked one out. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> Get away! <laughs> The future of entertainment is nearly invisible to the naked eye. The zombies are getting more aggressive. I push you in a different world. You know, you leave your reality into virtual reality. Although casual spectators can't see it, I'm currently battling zombies in a creepy mansion at a place called Sandbox VR. What is the uh, biggest question that people have when they come in here? Is it scary? Similar virtual reality entertainment experiences are popping up in malls across America. So this is gonna take my body and put it into another world. Totally different experience. Instead of investing in costly equipment, all this takes is a ticket. Choose from several adventures, including Star Trek, pirates, aliens, and yes, zombies. Oh God, we got a lot from the front. <laughs> Unlike VR at home, these are group experiences with up to six people playing together. Suit up in a headset, headphones, computer backpack and a haptic jacket. You feel all the shots or zombies grabbing you. Now we have lasers and zombies. The action lasts about 25 minutes. Ooh, that was a lot. That was very intense. You quickly forget you're inside a room at the mall. It was a lot of fun and very realistic. When you're finished, Sandbox VR shows you a highlight reel, which mixes reality with what you saw in your headset. It's definitely here to stay. I think it's gonna grow. You may see it in stadiums. You know, I see it growing way beyond just a physical facility. You know you want to do that. And what about this? I grew up as an environmentalist. I didn't really realize it until I started this company how much I was committed to the environment. It's pretty much a constant reminder and wake up that we as humans need to do better. Looking at my own industry, I knew right away how toxic boards were and what a massive footprint they were creating in terms of trash. And so I wanted to make them as, as environmentally friendly as possible and do what I could. I actually made the switch firstly from a performance standpoint. My boards are stronger, they didn't break anymore. The first iteration, you know, my first thing, I was like, well, my customers would be stoked because their boards are stronger and it's eco-friendly. If I'm making a product that says eco and environmentally friendly on it and it's creating more trash that could potentially end up in the landfill or in the ocean, I have to put a stop to it. So that's where the whole zero manufacturing waste was always an end goal for me. Kevin Wilden, I'm the co-founder of Sustainable Surf. We're a nonprofit based in California. We help the surf industry around the world figure out ways to make a more sustainable product and help protect and restore ocean health. The majority of surfboards made in California, all that waste just goes to the landfill. And Ryan figured out a way to actually reduce the waste. This is the living earth systems. And see this right here? See those holes? See this? This is styrofoam. And those holes 
are literally made, that little guy that just got out, that's a, a super worm. So it's a specific type of mealworm. Basically it has a bacteria in its gut that allows it to take an inorganic material such as styrofoam and turn it into an organic material. And so basically they eat this styrofoam and they poop out organic soil. A third of the waste is shaping dust, shaping waste, right? And the mealworms, the living earth systems, that's that solution. The other two thirds is all from the glassing and the excess resin, stir sticks, gloves, squeegees, brushes, all these things add up. So what we have here is our production waste. We call this our shred, and it is literally densified surfboard production waste. We upcycle it, a shreddy coaster, all right? There's another coaster. Like we did a yellow board, you can see it right there. This is a construction grade tile. There's no better example of that transition, that movement than Earth Technologies and Ryan Harris's shop. It's in the name. We use sustainable materials from the planet to make the boards a higher performance product. And we're not done yet. to do in Los Angeles and we want to do it all with you. Do you trust me? Of course you do. So go check this out. We're the number one thing to do in LA on TripAdvisor right now. So whether you're local, out of state, out of the country even, people from internationally have this on their agenda to do. Can you tell me a little bit about Echo Park Lake? In 1890, this was a man-made reservoir. Slightly after that, they decided to build a boathouse here. You know, back in the 1900s, this was kind of where LA somewhat started. Charlie Chaplin had his first movie in this area. In the 1910s, the boathouse was completed, and that's when the population started changing, and that's when Echo Park started becoming what it is today. And the reason Echo Park got its name is the city councilman who was uh, conducting construction here could actually hear his echoes from the park against the mountains and the foothills. Back in 2017, we reintroduced the swan boats to the location, which were here 100 years ago. And since then, over the past three years, we've been serving over 150,000 customers every single year. Kids, families, couples coming out for date nights, just kind of a day out of the house. Here at Echo Park Lake, we take safety very seriously. So you've already signed your waiver. Let's go ahead and get your life jacket on and buckle. And do these swans have names? These swans have, the, whatever you want to name it, you can name it. Some of the staff name them La Swan James. I want to ride in La Swan James. Right. Me and La Swan James! To me, this seems like something really safe that people can do during the pandemic. We require you come with your same household. You have to have a mask on while you're in line, but once you're out there, you can take your mask off and enjoy an hour on the water. At night, it's wonderful. Each swan boat has a LED light on it, and it illuminates the water while you're pedaling. You get to see the, all the downtown LA skyline. You see the fountain. You guys, this is so much fun. It's so peaceful and it's so great to be outdoors. But more than that, it's actually a really great workout. And I'm talking for this. Come out here and meet LaSwan James. You're gonna love it. And we're not done yet, but before we come back, our sponsors want you to know about this. California Love Drop is a charity that we started at the response of the pandemic hitting us. Well, we're here today, Antis Roofing is, along with Wahoos and Monster and Hint as part of the California Love Drop because we get to say thanks to the firefighters that protect us. We're not used to uh, receiving help, we're used to giving the help. Uh, and I think uh, what's kind of important about this last year and a half is uh, with everything going on with COVID, the morale 
is, has been difficult. You got steak, chicken, tofu, and fish. You got it all. A typical love drop is a meal in itself and treats. So we work with closely with Wahoo's Fish Tacos, Wing being a co-founder of this charity, and we deliver grab and go um, lunches and meals. So the fire department guys are getting ready for possible fire season. So let's come out here, give them a little thank you and a little pep and say, hey, we're ready. We're here behind you guys. And we really appreciate what you do keeping us safe. And we're really uh, getting into the uh, worst drought season that we've had in over a decade. Uh, my biggest concern in this area is the evacuation piece. And the Ready, Set, Go campaign allows our folks to think about and prepare ahead of time to be able to be able to evacuate when an order is issued. So Olivia, welcome to Fire Station 27. Uh, our members have 80 seconds to, when the bell goes off, to be able to get in their uh, PPEs or their turnouts to respond to a structure fire. And I'm challenging you today to get that done in 80 seconds against one of our best. All right, Troy, I'm ready for this challenge. You're going down hard. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right, Troy, good luck, buddy. All right, on your mark, get set, go. I win. Okay, well that's it for today. Bo Chaos Salon, thank you so much for letting us go off script. And remember, book now for 20% off. We are getting so many calls. I'm actually working the phone. Bo Chaos, could you please hold? Oh my God, what will we have for you tomorrow? You gotta come back and see. Bo Chaos, could you please hold? Oh no, I just think I erased all their appointments. All right, come back tomorrow. Love you.